All right, so I want to pick up from where the last screencast ended. Um, this would then be part two of our discussion of activity coefficients in DLE. And so in the last screencast, uh, we derived our gamma phi criteria phase coexistence uh, and ended here um, with our uh, expanded out isophagacity expression. And in the second box, I have my expression for the phagacity of um, component I and pure component state. And so what I'd like to do uh, next is let's go back in time, okay, and using this gamma phi method, a uh, gamma phi expression, let's rederive Reynolds law, okay? So I want to revisit Reynolds law, okay? And so how we're going to derive Reynolds law is we are going to make a series of assumptions, okay? So looking up at my rigorous gamma phi approach, um, you know, let's have at it. Okay, so assumption one, okay, let's start easy. Let's assume that our vapor phase is an ideal gas, okay? And so we're gonna assume that our vapor phase is an ideal gas, okay? And if we think back to, you know, our discussions and one that might be reasonable is think about our typical separation processes. If I'm trying to design a distillation column, most distillation columns are going to operate near ambient pressure, right? Why? If I want to operate at extreme pressures, well, then I've got to, you know, convince the mechanical engineers of my company to try and, you know, design some expensive um, pressurized column, right? Same thing, pulling vacuum in a column, uh, getting even lower pressures, right? They're, you know, challenging, but, you know, still we're talking about even lower pressures. So if I'm at low pressures near um, atmospheric pressure, Typically, you can assume your vapor phase is an ideal gas. Okay, the common exception to the rule is if I'm dealing with a component that's known to associate in the vapor phase. And so when I think about associating fluids in the vapor phase, the most common example that comes to mind is components that contain carboxylic acid. So if I'm trying to model acetic acid, well, acetic acid is known to dimerize, right, or self-associate um, in the vapor phase. Um, so acetic acid, eh, okay. But in general, if I have a fluid um, or a system near ambient pressure, um, then it's probably pretty reasonable to assume it's, it's an ideal gas. Now, if you were modeling acetic acid and you assumed the vapor phase was an ideal gas and you made some predictions and realized that your predictions weren't in good agreement with you know, experimental data, that's where you can go back and kind of check some of these assumptions, right, and fix them uh, where appropriate. Uh, but um, even ChemCAD can, can help you out with things like this in terms of suggesting something like the Hayden O'Connell model um, to count for uh, vapor phase non-ideality. Okay? But Reynolds law, first assumption is going to be that our vapor phase is an ideal gas. And what that allows us to do is assume that phi right, is approximately equal to 1. And then in Fi pure, we'll also take that to be that phi sat is approximately equal to 1. Okay, so we'll kill those fugacity coefficient terms. Okay, all right. So then, next assumption, okay, that Reynolds law will make is if I look at the fugacity of component I in its pure component state, so we already killed off my fugacity um, at saturation, fugacity coefficient at saturation. Um, the next assumption is that my pointing correction is negligible. Okay. So we're going to assume our pointing correction is negligible. And so we had a slide that looked at some numerical values of pointing correction. But in general, if I am at low pressures, okay, well removed from my critical point, the assumption that my pointing correction is negligible is probably pretty good. Okay, if I am trying to model um, you know, say solubility in supercritical CO2. So if I'm have a, if I'm dealing with supercritical CO2, so I'm dealing with pressures of, you know, hundreds of bars, okay, um, thousands of bars, okay. So if I'm dealing with huge pressures, much greater than atmospheric pressure, then I might need to consider using pointing correction. So if I'm at 100 bars, thousand bars, uh, well then I probably need to use pointing correction. If I'm at one bar, well then my pointing correction is probably pretty pretty insignificant, okay? And so 
Uh, again, most common place in which you would encounter a pointing correction is if you're dealing with, um, say, supercritical CO2 or supercritical fluid, supercritical CO2, supercritical water, things at extremely high pressures. Okay, but in general, it's reasonable to assume that your pointing correction is negligible, at which point this term in brackets would go away. Okay, and so I'm going to take a second and I'm going to write down um, what we're left with. Okay, so if I were to plug in um, FI peer up above, FI peer now is just PI sat. Okay, and what we're left with is gamma i times xi times PI sat is equal to yi p. Okay. This actually gets the special name of modified Reynolds law. Okay. Okay, and we'll come back to that in a moment and talk about what modified Reynolds law means. Okay. But to get to Reynolds law, we're gonna need to make a third assumption. Okay. The third assumption made by Reynolds law is that my liquid phase is ideal. Okay. And so in assuming that my liquid phase is ideal, okay, so we're gonna assume liquid is ideal, assume that my liquid phase is ideal, means that we're going to assume that gamma i is equal to 1. Okay, One, would it be reasonable to assume that my liquid phase is ideal? Well, this is partially what you're doing with the Reynolds law problem set. Um, but one, you're going to have a system that, you know, is ideal is, what is an ideal solution? An ideal solution is the system in which all of our intermolecular interactions are exactly the same. So if I have a mixture of chemically similar compounds, well, then it might be reasonable to assume that I have gammas close to 1. So if I have a mixture of two linear alkanes, pentane and butane, okay, uh, C5 uh, and C4, uh, pentane and butane, then, yeah, it'd be reasonable to assume that I have an ideal solution, okay? So this ideal solution approximation is only going to be reasonable when I have chemically similar compounds, okay? And that's actually going to be one of the biggest flaws um, in Reynolds law. Okay, but if I assume that my liquid phase is ideal, then I get to what's known as Reynolds law. Xi pi sat is equal to yip. <clears throat> okay, so this gives me Reynolds law. Okay. So another benefit of expanding outer fugacities in that gamma phi expression is it allows us to systematically make approximations. Okay, allows us to systematically make approximations. So now is a first order estimate. So if I had n extremely limited data and I wanted to try and uh, model phase equilibria for a given binary system, well, under these conditions, I can get to Reynolds law. So as long as I have, say, some tabulated Antoine constants, which are typically readily available uh, for a large range of fluids, I can go ahead and I could predict, you know, vapor liquid coexistence um, for that system. And even assuming something's ideal, um, you know, when we've solved problems before, I've always said, oh, draw a phase diagram, draw a phase diagram for an idealized system. Because uh, even that idealized system can help you work through a problem and deal with actual data. And so Reynolds law can often still help you conceptually work through um, problems. Okay, but this is Reynolds law. So expanding our fugacity allows us to make a system, um, some systematic assumptions um, to get my expression in a form that, you know, is readily workable. Okay, so that's Reynolds law. Now I, modif I mentioned modified Reynolds law. Okay, <clears throat> so the difference between modified Reynolds law and Reynolds law is the assumption that I have an ideal solution. Okay, so now when I look at Reynolds law, okay, the most common shortcoming is this assumption of an ideal solution. Okay, so again, I'm modeling uh, distillation. I'm interested in VLE uh, for distillation processes at atmospheric uh, pressure. As long as I'm not dealing with a component that's known to associate in the vapor phase, well, then it's going to be pretty reasonable to assume that the vapor phase is an ideal gas. Okay. When it comes to pointing correction, <clears throat> well, as long as I'm not at extreme pressures, as long as I'm not dealing with, say, supercritical fluids, well, then it's going to be fairly reasonable to assume that my pointing correction is negligible. Okay. The assumption, which is least likely to be value, value, uh, vi uh, that is least likely to be valid is that of an ideal solution, right? That ideal solution approximation is only going to work if I have chemically similar compounds. If I'm separating alkanes, it'll work, okay? Uh, so when I used to teach a uh, mass transfer class, so we'd do a lot of, um, you know, distillation design and such, 
Um, and the course didn't necessarily assume a prereq of this course, a chemical engineering thermodynamics class. And so you end up si solving lots of problems involving, you know, alkanes. So they say they're related to the petroleum industry. So you can assume that Reynolds law uh, is valid. Okay. So most common, oh, most common um, shortfall of Reynolds law is this assumption of an ideal solution. So where modified Reynolds law come in comes in is it accounts for solution phase non-ideality by including activity coefficient. So modified Reynolds law just accounts for the most common shortfall, which is uh, deviations from um, that ideal solution limit. And so the most common way that we'll use to model vapor-liquid coexistence is this modified Reynolds law approach. Okay. And so, you know, if I fire up ChemCAD and I say I want to model, um, a, a, you know, distillation column for uh, these two binary um, components, um, chances are it's going to be using a modified Reynolds law expression. Um, if a system is known to deviate from the ideal gas limit, I have associating compound. Um, well, then it allows you the ability to calculate uh, fugacity coefficients, and typically you'd use something called the uh, Hayden O'Connell model um, for associating fluids. Um, but you can also calculate these you know, in other ways using, say, an equation state. Um, but, uh, but this is the, the most common way uh, that it's handled. Okay, cool. So with that, I'm going to stop this video. Then in the next one, I want to bring up our bubble uh, line expressions using Reynolds Law and modified Reynolds Law, and draw PXY, and talk about deviations from Reynolds Law and what they mean. Okay, and that'll be our uh, third and final video uh, in this series on gammas and um, phase coexistence, okay?